This week, we'll showcase some delicious new offerings at Disney Springs. And we'll have an interview with the author of the book, Walt Disney World for Kids. Plus the latest theme park news and more coming at you from the attraction studio at Fun Spot America right, right now. now. everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the show. I'm Banks. And I'm Jesse. So Elisa's out of town. Her brother recently uh, had a daughter so she's out there visiting her little niece so pictures are adorable. But Jesse is here this week. Speaking of babies, how, how yeah. are you doing? You're, you're expecting. I am. I'm good. A little bit of a Wonder Woman lately. Yeah. Wonder where I put my keys. <laughs> wonder where I put my shoes. Gotcha. Wonder if I turn the lights off. Yep. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, it's been great. It's been wonderful. Now, your daughter is due when? November 28th. November 28th. Oh, so right around Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's awesome. Right before Christmas. You have a, what's, what sort of planning have you been doing? Um, well, we just moved into our new apartment, so we're setting up the nursery, okay. which is a, you know, how do you theme it? You have so it's many be options. Theme park related. I know. It's like, which princess? <laughs> There's so many. Right, right. And then she'll grow into her own princess, which will probably be the opposite of the one I pick. <laughs> but. Yeah, we're excited. Well, we, we've got, I know uh, Sydney and I, we have a lot of uh, old, Spencer's old, like, newborn clothes. So we'll have to, we'll, we'll have to donate some. I love for, for donations. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get some ready for you. But right now, we got some news in the queue to talk about yeah. right after this. This week's show is brought to you by MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for Disney World, Universal, cruises, and all your vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. Undercover Taurus is our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Florida and California theme parks and attractions. For the best deals and planning tips, go to UndercoverTourist.com or find them on Facebook and Twitter. Fun Spot America is Central Florida's only family-owned theme park, offering two locations, Orlando and Kissimmee. Both theme parks provide safe, clean fun. For more information, visit Fun-Spot.com. Star Wars weekends at Hollywood Studios may have vanished, but the force is still strong with another theme park not so far, far away. That's right, because Legoland Florida is hosting Lego Star Wars Days on September 10th and 11th. As part of the event, a master model builder will host an interactive Q&A and will offer building tips. There will also be a Lego Star Wars mural build, a competition build, and a meet and greet with Lego Darth Vader. Fans are encouraged to come dressed as their favorite Star Wars characters and take part in the all-new parade. Those who dress the part will also have a chance to win a Lego Star Wars prize pack. I've been, I've, I missed Star Wars Weekends this year. I, 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 I hated that it's uh, no longer here with us, at least hopefully for the time being. But uh, yeah, I'm excited that, uh, that Legoland's doing that because they did it this last year too and it, was, uh, it seemed to be a really big success. So I'm glad that they brought this back and uh, definitely gotta go take Spen my daughter Spencer over there. I'm excited because Darth Vader Lego is really cute. Isn't it? Like you, you can't be upset or angry <laughs> or be like, aw, Darth Vader. Oh, you, you want to take over the whole galaxy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, let's okay. get a picture together. <laughs> yeah, he's really cute. And I hear they're doing Star Wars themed fireworks yeah, then at yeah, the end of the night. Yeah, uh, over over uh, Lake Eloise there. And the fireworks at Legoland are always very cool, and especially if they have the that they give out the 3D glasses that turn to fireworks in the bricks. Those are really fun. So. Aw, yeah, well, I wish I was, if I was here this weekend, I would be there. Well, yeah, I I'm, would be there. I'm definitely gonna have to go. So I think I think we might be sending uh, one of our vlogger families out there to cover the event. So maybe we'll have Aww. a little coverage in the future. That'd be perfect. All right. Now, as part of this year's Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios in Hollywood, which kicks off on September 16th, horror filmmaker Eli Roth will take the helm of the Terror Tram attraction, giving it a makeover featuring killer clowns. The all-new experience will tell the fictional tale of Harold Kapowitz, whose alter ego Koodles the clown went from cheerful circus performer to lovable star of his own television show before he was overcome by his killer instincts. Mm. When he found himself exiled by Hollywood, the crazed and disheveled recluse 
hid from society at Universal Studios, emerging as notorious serial killer clown Hollywood Harry. Hollywood Harry mm. has started recruiting other outcast clowns who will take revenge on the studio's tour guides and visitors. This is very interesting. I, uh, I've never been out to Universal Hollywood's uh, Halloween Horror Nights, but I watch videos every year and their terror tram, it's, it's their studio tour that they have normal guests, but at nighttime they, they have like characters running around the back lots to sets and you actually get to get out of the tram vehicle and walk around the these movie sets and stuff. So it, it's always been based on like movies and, uh, and intellectual properties for the past couple years like Walking Dead and Purge. But now this, this I don't know how long it's been since they've done an original story for the Terror Tram, but that's, this is a pretty neat little interesting story they got going on. It looks horrifying. <laughs> yeah, it looks, do you like clowns? I, well, I like them, but not like this. <laughs> if you see the trailer on the, um, the website, it's where horrifying. They have, where they have the clown just kind of walking around. Yeah, and he's like there. just standing there, like it's and they're like, freaky. watch out for him. I'm like, I won't even go looking for him. <laughs> well, guests who board the trams are going to be going looking for them, whether they like it or not. It sounds terrible. At night, absolutely horrifying. Imagine seeing him while you're walking by, like the the psycho motel. Seeing him during the day would be scary. They just have him just standing there. Like that's scary. He's got blood all over his face. His red jacket. It's just. Well, they Hollywood not my cup gets, of tea. Hollywood gets to have all the fun with that one. We'll, we'll, they can we'll keep stick that. a chance here. They can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Cedar Point in Ohio has announced several new projects for 2017. The expansion includes the transformation of the Soak City to the new 18-acre Cedar Point Shores Water Park, and an expansion and transformation of Breakers Express into Cedar Point's Express Hotel. The new Crystal Rock Cafe will cook up items like fresh-baked flatbreads, farm stand salad options, pesto glazed grilled chicken sandwiches, and more. Cedar Point Shores will also boast a completely new main entrance, a poolside bar, family changing areas, more lounge chairs, additional shade, improved landscape, and unobstructed views of Lake Erie. Cedar Point is, is one of those theme parks that's at the top of my uh, theme park bucket list. I've always wanted to go there. They got some really great world-class coasters there. Uh, so yeah, I, I gotta make a tr trip to Ohio sometime and see this. They're getting more lounge chairs. Why wouldn't you? I mean... <laughs> lounge chairs on Lake... Uh, <laughs> that's on the all lake. that makes it go. More lounge chairs, more, more shade. shade. Exactly. I mean, sounds perfect to me. Exactly. And especially on during those hot summers, you're gonna need shade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Characters, an independent low-budget comedy about costume theme park performers, is now available on demand platforms. The film is shot partially in Gatorland, Old Town, and the town of Celebration. It tells the tale of Tucker, who works as Hoppy, the kangaroo at a small amusement park in Central Florida. Tucker learns the ins and outs of being a costume character, and in the process discovers his summer workplace is wildly dysfunctional. Characters is available for purchase or rental from Amazon, iTunes, Google, YouTube, Vudu, and other platforms. Visit charactersmovie.com for more information. That's characters with a Z at the end instead of the S. Yes, I, I, I bought this movie on iTunes and gave it a watch, and I completely adore this, this movie. It's such a fun, uh, it's a fun little movie, uh, all shot locally. So especially if you live here in Orlando and you go to places like Old Town and Gator Lane, you're instantly like, oh my gosh, look, there's, uh, I know that, that strip right there. Uh, oh, I know that place. And you might even spot some local actors too. I know a couple of our former show hosts are in the movie as well. Really? Exactly. So it's, if you, if you love theme parks, you're going to love this movie. A lot of great in, in jokes and references, especially if you've been in entertainment. <clears throat> if you've worked in the theme parks, definitely. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see Orlando a little bit more than what we're used to seeing. Anytime something's filmed here, exactly. I have to own it. It just has to happen, like Sharknado and and now this new movie is. So, yeah, you, I'm excited. Really, I, I know you have had a background in yeah. theme park <laughs> entertainment, so I know you'll definitely really enjoy this movie. I'm For excited. Sure. I think it'll be fun. It's great to see a film coming to Orlando. Exactly. Hi, everybody. It's Hidden Mickey of the Week time again. Let's go to Disney's Hollywood Studios to Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater Restaurant. This is a difficult Hidden Mickey to see. It's almost like a holographic effect and the multicolored tiles above the kitchen door entrance on the right as you face the kitchen there's a side profile of Mickey he's outlined in yellow tiles 
and appears to be looking to his left, our right, look first for his jaw, a curving line of yellow tiles at the lower middle of the mosaic square. You might have to stare a while to see him, but it looks purposeful to me and it's a very cool image. Spot America. Freeze! Yep, that's me. I'm happy to get real. Check your TV on demand, also on Amazon, iTunes, and all other digital retailers. Characters, yeah, with a Z. So, Jesse, I, I got to ask, have you had any weird food cravings lately? Hmm, you know, for some reason, I've been wanting Asian food and gelato. Really? Because that's exactly what we're featuring on our next segment from Disney Springs. Hmm, that's strange. I had no idea. But take it away, Elisa, and please bring me back some chocolate and sushi. Maybe chocolate with sushi? <sighs> Oh, that sounds great. Chocolate sushi. We're here at Disney Springs taking a summer stroll, checking out some of their food offerings. First up is Morimoto Asia Street Food. I'm really excited to check it out. I've actually never been here. So let's go. Sat down for some street food here at Morimoto Street Food. Uh, I got the pork egg rolls. They also have vegetable available, but I like pork. And then we have these katsu sliders, and I have no idea what's in them, but they look fantastic. And this is the Singapore slush, which just tastes like lemonade. It's amazing. I'm really excited to try it. All right, let's see. Oh my god, that is so good. Oh my gosh, that's worth every every calorie that's in those. It's a slider. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. This is a this is so delicious. I'll be back here tonight. <laughs> well that was spilling. <laughs> but I think it might be time for a sweet treat. Let's go check out Vivali. We made it to Viva Lee. I'm really excited. This brand has actually been around since 1930, so we're gonna check out some fresh gelato flavors. Now, I've been to Italy and I've had gelato a lot, so I'm excited to see how it'll stack up. Let's go. Now, what inspired you to open a place here in Orlando? I inspired, uh, I don't really know. Probably because uh, to eat a gelato is something uh, very happy, so this is the happiest uh, place on earth, so why not? A nice combination. Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell me the difference between gelato and ice cream? Yes, okay. A gelato, of course, is something make fresh every day. Uh, healthier, less fat, less air, which is very important. No artificial flavors or coloring uh, or uh, stabilizer or something like this. Instead, ice cream is a little bit more fat. Uh, it's not fresh. Somebody Sometimes you can eat something that is made many months before, so this is uh, the difference. Also, uh, it's really make fresh every day with passion. This is the final ingredient uh, Wonderful. of the gelato. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, now, we saw a basket of peaches in there. Yeah. Now, can you tell us what you're going to do with those? Uh, we are going to make a fantastic uh, sorbet. We are waiting for the right uh, uh, mature and then we start to uh, chop and add the water and sugar, that's it. So just the three ingredients. 
Do you have an absolute favorite flavor of gelato? Yeah. Okay, I like uh, coffee. Coffee, yes. <laughs> coffee, but it depends uh, when I wake up in the morning and uh, even if I have the chance to taste the gelato every time, everywhere. <laughs> but uh, sometimes uh, oh, when, um, when I spin gelato, I can say, oh, this today is it's fantastic, so I need, uh, I need to taste. But so it depends by how I feel uh, during the day. Yeah. a little cup of a salted caramel which was amazing I also tried the cream custard which was amazing the chocolate which is amazing uh, but this gelato is so fresh she even has a huge basket of peaches that's gonna be used in the next couple days so this is legit <laughs> oh my gosh I just got a hold of an affogato I feel like I just won the lottery this is so exciting it's espresso and gelato two of my favorite things caffeine and ice cream <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm having this every morning. <laughs> this is so good. Mm, that's fantastic. You can get it here, uh, and you should. <laughs> now, I am stuffed, but Viva Lee and Morimoto were amazing. They're open every day here at Disney Springs, so come check them out. The next time you plan a Disney vacation, book with a travel agency that's been specifically designated as an authorized Disney vacation planner. Unlike some other agencies, many of our agents' exclusive knowledge of Walt Disney World can help you get the most out of your vacation, and the assistance of our travel professionals can help you get a customized Disney vacation that's just right for you, your family, and your budget. Start planning your magical vacation today by visiting mousefantravel.com. Skip the lines with undercover tourists, crowd calendars, touring plans, and mobile apps. Stop paying full price for your family vacation and visit Undercover Tours today. So with Orlando being a huge theme park destination, lots of families come to Orlando to enjoy parks like Walt Disney World. Sometimes they need a little help planning what to do with their kids, and that's why there is a book called The Unofficial Guide to Walt Disney World with Kids. And we have co-author Lillian Opsomer here. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I am delighted to be here. Well, we appreciate you coming by. Can, tell us a little bit about this book, Walt Disney World with Kids. Well, I started um, co-authoring the book together with Bob Salinger mm -hmm. about 10 years ago. So this um, is the ninth edition of the book. Um, both Bob and I come regularly down here uh, to do our research. I myself come about five to six times a year. Okay. This is my first visit this year. Oh, nice. Now, I know a big question that a lot of families have when they're planning to come to Walt Disney World, especially for the first time with their children, what would be the best age for a child to be to come to Walt Disney World? That is a very tricky question in the sense that there are a few answers. Number one, it is important to remember what you want to have out of this vacation. So when we're talking about taking very young children, mm -hmm. I'm talking the three, age uh, three to five group, they are amazed at everything they see. It wouldn't matter which park, the colors, the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, what is important is that the parents are prepared. A, a very small child cannot uh, have the pace of, of 12 hours in the park, uh, the heat, the sun, right. it, is, it is really all important. Uh, the next thing that uh, you have to remember is uh, the memories are for the parents. The kids won't remember that at that young age, but you will. So it will be um, the first meeting and picture with a princess, it will be um, the balloons in the park, uh, pictures you take with your children, those are the memories you make. Next comes the age where I would say uh, the magic is still there because that's really important to remember when they still believe. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see Mickey and it's Mickey. Yeah. And uh, so, so that is, I think, a beautiful age. While those children cannot do all the rights because of uh, height restrictions or just because they might still be frightened, it is a magical age to take them from three to, from, from five onwards to maybe eight, 
I would say. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got a little two year old, and I, I know she's not going to remember all this time that we come to the parks, but the photos and all the videos that I have is just definitely going to be a lifetime of memories. It is. Her. It absolutely is. So I think it is worthwhile. And many families have several children of different age group, and if you wait forever, when are you going to go? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's great. And great point. Now, when they're so. when the families are planning their vacations here, is it important to include their kids in in the planning? If like as them what do they want to do well I think it is important and interesting to do so but you have to keep in mind that whatever you promise them you better keep it <laughs> yeah. and don't promise too much and lace and, and we have a big chapter about preparation about talking to your children about um, discipline on the road for example it's very important um, coming to Disney is not the moment where you're going to change sleeping pattern um, comfort pattern that children have uh, or any anything that is part of your regular routine or discipline uh, at home so that's part of the planning uh, same thing goes for how much money you can have how many gifts you can buy in mm -hmm. all the tempting shops now i know especially here in orlando there are a lot of theme parks to visit mm -hmm. for just that walt disney world so if you're very limited on your time while you're in orlando what would you tell families is the best park or parks to go to with their kids the, the park that has the most offerings for for young kids it would absolutely be the magic kingdom that is um, clear so um, and there's so much to do that you can spend plenty of time at the magic kingdom oh yeah um, if you do have more time i think it is important that you build the uh, excitement up don't start with the Magic Kingdom and then try to have uh, turn your child into a gourmet at Epcot. So, <laughs> but do it the other way around. Epcot is much fun and it's a good introduction, a much calmer one mm -hmm. for young children uh, to go to parks. Uh, even if they, if they don't expect to go on a ride every five minutes, uh, they won't see anything wrong with it. It's a beautiful park to visit. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, coming from experience, um, when I was a kid coming to Walt Disney World, and I was old enough to ride a ride, like the Tower of Terror, I was scared to ride this ride. I, my mom had to almost drag me on screaming to go on this ride. But so for, for kids who may be a little scared to ride a ride for the first time, what, what would the parents, the best method for parents to get them to go on the ride? There's two things you can do. By the way, I'm scared for the Tower of Terror <laughs> still. I do it for the sake of research, mm -hmm. and only if they change something in the sequence, and then preferably, I hope they don't. <laughs> uh, but it's, it, the idea is really to, to familiarize the child. You know your child best. Mm -hmm. If the child is just overall too scared to do it, number one, don't. Mm -hmm. Just don't force it. It, it. it makes no sense. Don't ever ridicule them for the ride. What you could do is, number one, show them the YouTube videos that are out there plenty, how, the, how it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, the likelihood is, I mean, everybody screams when it comes down, right? So it, it went frightened, but at least you've been honest. You showed what it is. It's true. Uh, and then you can start with smaller, smaller roller coasters. Uh, it all will depend what your child is frightened about, the darkness, the noise, or the overall, you know, movement of a ride. So as I talked about earlier, my, my daughter Spencer is, is two years old. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of families that do come down have kids younger than three. Mm -hmm. So there's not really a lot of options in the parks for them to experience. Mm -hmm. But for those who cannot do some of the bigger attractions, what are some good alternatives like splash play areas, uh, things like that? Kids love the splash play areas. One of the things we have learned from research is what small kids, all kids overall, remember most from their Disney vacation mm -hmm. is the pool. The pool, okay. <laughs> it's the pool of the hotel. <laughs> and here you have to do like with the parks. Don't start with the Grand Floridian because they will, that they will remember that the pool is different there than in Motel 6. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, the splash zone. I mean, go to Epcot, see them. They're all, I'm jealous when yeah. it's hot. They're all playing there. But in the Magic Kingdom, you do have the splash zone in, in, in the new Fantasyland mm -hmm. area. Kids love it. Mm -hmm. Just remember bring a set of clothes change but most of all if you don't do that shoes or take them off don't let them run around with wet sneakers it's mm -hmm. a 
it's a recipe for blisters for small children, or for anybody for that matter. All right, so it's so the last question here. Where can people go and find a copy of this book if they're looking to plan? Well, the book is available in every major bookstore. It's available on Amazon.com, of course. And if you want to follow us for free tips on um, how to do all kind of fun things with your kids, I have a Facebook page mm -hmm. for the book. It's uh, uh, the unofficial guides to Walt Disney World with kids. So. Uh, I look forward to see a lot of all of you out there. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. If you're planning on attending Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party this weekend, or any of the upcoming weeks, be sure you check out the updated costume guidelines on their website, as the rules have changed since previous years due to enhanced park security. Also keep in mind that while a majority of the party is at night and officially starts at 7 p.m., you can get into the park as early as 4 p.m. when it is still sunny. And just because it is dark, it doesn't mean it isn't humid. Be sure you pick and alter your costumes for the heat and humidity. Happy trick-or-treating. It's time for another giveaway! Yes, now this week's prize is provided by D23, Disney's official fan club. Now what we got here is um, the month of September, they are ce celebrating the fan anniversary of Beauty and the Beast. 25th anniversary mm -hmm. of the movie, so D23 does what they call a fan anniversary. Now, for if you are a D23 member, you've already gotten, you might have already gotten your magazine, I know I got mine. It's um, the main story is all about Beauty and the Beast, and you also had these little cutouts right here to Create your own fan anniversary party in your house throughout September. Get photos with these, or you can go to the website. We're going to list right down here. Print out your own copies if you're not a member that gets the magazine. But one thing they didn't include for members is this little plush of Cogsworth. And we're going to throw this in to the giveaway, including all of the things in here you see. So. To enter to win the prize, find this episode on our website at attractionsmagazine.com backslash the show and comment on the page telling us about which Disney animated film you'd like to see made into a live action movie. Mm. Now one winner will be chosen from all the entries and only one response will be accepted from each person. We must have your response by the end of the day next Monday, September 5th, 2016. Good luck, everyone. I, I, I want to I, I know real quick, though. What what movie do you want to see made into do a live I action? Do I want to see? Yes. What, di of Disney's all animated movies that they haven't done yet, because they've done a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see made? The Little Mermaid. I think they're working on that. I heard rumors, but there's always these different rumor channels that I, different people are grabbing my mermaid. I, th I, th I think I heard that. Uh, <laughs> I think I recently heard that, that Alan Minken is, is going to uh, work with Lin-Manuel Miranda on the uh, she music. She has to be a redhead. I've heard, yeah. Then they, they, they might they make think, her blonde. I, I think that one of the no. actresses they talked about is blonde, so maybe maybe she'll dye her head red, or her hair red. It's her signature thing. They is have she? they have to do it. It has to be fire engine red, not strawberry red. I'm picky about that. You know, I would love to see. I know it's <laughs> I know it's a more recent movie, but I'd love to see a Tangled live action. Ooh. I know it's more recent, so but I think that that would be a pretty, really pretty movie as a live action. But you got to have Mandy Moore and Zach, Zachary Levi reprise the roles. You have to. <laughs> All right. Now for this week's calendar. Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party at Magic Kingdom begins on this Friday. Wow. So oh. <laughs> And Disney on Ice will be at the Amway Center in Orlando for numerous performances this weekend. Raglan Road will present a brand new 90-minute live show of music and dance called The Rhythms of Raglan and more for their annual Great Irish Hooli this weekend on September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Don't forget to subscribe to our calendar at attractionsmagazine.com to stay up to date on the events like this and more. Now this week's happy, happy birthdays go out to Chad Smith, Annabelle Pereira, Michelle Moreno, John Frost, Deb Wills, and our very own reporters, Alyssa Daniels and Mike Carr. Woo now, 
We want to thank MEI Travel, our preferred travel agent for cruises, Disney World, Universal, and all your other vacation planning needs. For a free quote with no obligation, visit MEITravel.com. And much thanks to Undercover Tourist, our recommended supplier of discount tickets to Orlando and California attractions. For more information, visit UndercoverTourist.com. And thanks to Fun Spot America, Central Florida's only family-owned theme park. They provide safe, clean fun in Orlando and Kissimmee. Visit Fun-Spot.com for tickets and more information. Now, if you enjoy our show, please support it by subscribing to our magazine through our website, in our app, or on the Nook or Kindle. Okay, so... Halloween already this Friday. I know. Only two days into September. Time is going so fast. It's insane. Can you smell the pumpkin spice? <sighs> it's coming <laughs> soon, isn't it? Coming soon. Oh no, it's already it's here. It's already here. Oh yeah, I had a pumpkin spice latte on my way here. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to go out and it get one on my way home. It was decaf and sugar free, for the record. But I did have one. Oh, well, they, <laughs> any way you can to get pumpkin spice. So, um, also, Disney on Ice. Have you ever been to a Disney on Ice show? Oh, I was about this big, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never been, uh, and, and I'm very surprised that I've never been to a Disney on Ice show. So I'm finally, the the, the, the stars have aligned, so Sydney uh, Spencer and I, we're all going to go together this Sunday to see oh, Disney on Ice. Outing. So it's going to be, I cannot wait. So They have great snacks, I hear. Really? Yeah, I don't know why that came to my mind, but well, that's you, where you I got, went. Well, you got some cravings. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, ice shaved things and the popcorn. <laughs> okay, that's just getting out of hand. No. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll close this out here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again next week. Until then, visit your local attractions, uh, try something new, stay safe, and most of all, have, have fun. Food. <laughs>